Dear God. There's too much fluffiness here for me to handle. Oh, greetings fellow cinema freaks, motion picture maniacs, and the like. I'm Brandon the Baby Man, and welcome to Golden Ticket Reviews, the movie review show where if it's classic or crap, you see through it, I review it. Well, guys, after doing my reviews of The Rise of Maku and Never Judge a Hyena by its spots, I felt I should address some comments made by some certain viewers before we begin this episode review of The Lion Guard. Now, these comments centered around how the character of Bunga is supposed to represent someone the kids can connect with, particularly the incredibly younger crowd, and how the bathing subplot Stink song aside, was actually pretty essential in order to not only add an obstacle in the overall end plan of the episode, but also help to teach kids to remain clean and healthy, which I can pretty much respect the creators of the show for in order to help spread good messages to the youth of today. As such, I feel like going into this next episode, Bunga the Wise, the one where the farting honey badger becomes a sage, <coughs> with an open mind. I think I've rambled on long enough, so let's just see how far the bungle hole goes. Now, in all fairness, the episode starts off strongly and epically as we see the guard in the middle of a fierce storm trying to coax some monkeys out of a falling tree. You gotta come down! It's not safe up there! You'll come down when the rain stops! Kion! The tree's gonna go! And I don't wanna go with it! I can't do it, Captain Kion! I don't... Bunga shows he knows his stuff by once again using his stink, which has returned from the last episode, I guess, and explains why no Hyraxes are sticking to him in order to get the monkeys out of the tree. When the rain stops. Well, as the old saying goes, sometimes you just can't get the monkey off your back. So the gang of guard members take a breather while Kion partakes in a little ghostly lion wisdom. Arthur, King of the Britons. I was thinking, the rains cause so many problems for the Pride Lands. What if I use the roar to blow the big rainstorms away? Kion, the easy solution is not always the best solution. Yes, Grandfather. And with all good advice, there's sometimes a river that needs to run through it. Bestie, let me out! <laughs> <sighs> smells like fish in there. I swear, I almost found Dory in there. What's going on? There's never been a river here before. Someone cried it? The guard tries their hardest to block the river, and it's Bunga who comes up with the solution. And of course, the first person to recognize this brilliance is Paul Shazibra. Oh my! Whose idea was this? Mine! Pretty awesome, huh? Impressive! Uh-oh! Now look at it! What do we do about that? Hmm. Put a stick in it! Did you put a splint on it? Of course! What'd you use? Me. Rafiki then shows up for the obligatory word spewing that we'll be taking advantage of in the next few moments. Honey badgers? They are the Pride Land's smartest animals when... Oh, 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 wait a minute. Honey badgers are the smartest when they think before they speak. <sighs> but if they do not... Oh, 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 total disaster! <laughs> hmm, where'd everybody go? And isn't it ironic? So Bunga's taken off, but that won't keep the guard from their, uh, guardly errands, which includes flipping turtles and turning over flipped porcupine logs. There you go, guys. See you next time. Thanks. So they've helped the monkeys and the turtles. Okay, if they help out any beetles or any animals with flaming lips, I'm catching the A113 train out of here. Everyone, you gotta see what's going on at Hakuna Matata Falls. What? You gotta see what's going on at Hakuna Matata Falls! Hakuna Matata Falls? Timon and Pumbaa's home is literally called 
Hakuna Matata Balls. Isn't that like calling Paul Simon's home the You Can Call Me Alice State or having a Flintstones restaurant be called the Yabba Dabba Doo Cafe? So, and I kid you not, we get a blatant remake of one of the subplots of Secret of Nim 2, where one character muddles around as a sidekick and his friends, or in this case uncles, get paid and bugs no less for giving advice. This is like making a psychic out of Maddie Ziegler from Dance Moms. Sure, she's a talented dancer and seems nice, but to see her give visions with a crystal ball is pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Hell, she barely made Dancing with Shia LaBeouf seem plausible. He can solve almost any problem conceivable! I got so much wisdom, it's unbelievable! Look guys, I'm trying to like this kid so much. I really, really am. I'm trying to be an optimist about this character. And I can at least say this about him. He's better than Jar Jar. Good for him. Hmm, uh, Bunga the Wise. Uh, suppose I see a pile of rocks with a leak in it. Where do I find a stick? And does your chewing gum lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? Alright, everybody back in line! Don't worry! You'll all get your turn eventually! Oh, come on! They all go in and see Bunga where he explains his newfound sagedom. Then, I had an even better idea! I can share my great ideas! I can help everybody in the Pride Lands by telling them what to do! I realized that there was more power that needed to be handled in the Pride Lands. First animal advice, and then the world! Bunga! You already helped the Pride Lands. You're on the Lion Guard. You're the Pride Lands' bravest. But I'm also the smartest. It's difficult being so gifted. A statement most handsome people like myself can identify with. But Bunga's advice leads to animals naturally going bonkers with the clearly bad wisdom planted into them, starting with this ostrich here. Are you okay? I am now. <coughs> Thanks. So, why did you stick your head in the sand in the first place? Bunga the Wise said it was the best way to avoid seeing hyenas, and he's the smartest animal there is. <laughs> why did she look at Kion funny there? Hey, our flowers! You shouldn't eat these. These flowers will make you sick! But Bunga the Wise said pink flowers were the tastiest, and he's the smartest animal there is. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, you're thinking, why am I looking PO'd at my boss for something that wasn't his fault? Okay, go ahead and say it. I told you Bunga shouldn't be handing out advice. Yes, that is correct, that is correct. But did you not hear this line from earlier? Yeah, he did, but I just got a bad feeling about all this. Yeah, he agreed with you. He freaking agreed with you. So why are you trying to pin this all on him? Because he's the leader? Yeah. One of the great rules of teamwork, if something goes wrong, always blame the frickin' leader. That's the American way, or African way. Look, fully Miss Cheetah Girl, whatever your name is, you should just do what other people do in times of crisis, idiocy, and or craziness. Blame the president and or government. And seeing how Trump is now in the running, it's pretty much imperative that you blame someone in politics. <laughs> it's Cirque de la Idiots. For the record, I was also considering Carnival de Lunacy. Kion tells Bunga to get his wise butt head out of the clouds in a nicer way than I put it, but Timon will have none of this understatement of the frickin' millennium. He's even given the Lion Guard advice. Anybody remember a little thing called the dam? That's right. His idea, his advice, problem solved, the end. Now I have some advice. Shall we run for our lives? Oh yes, let's. The river prepares to flood the valley harder than the river in Noah's time, and the guard prepares to get the animals to safety, which leads them into a canyon. Ha! You're afraid to get wet. Dead end? Oh no! Kion! So, in 
this episode so far, we've seen Bungo become a wise man psychic with a big head, fully being pissed at Kion, even though he was in agreement with her that their friend shouldn't be given advice. The animals of the Pride Lands were stupid enough to follow the advice of a possibly six or seven year old badger kid, and now Ono has led the animals into a dead end. Did everyone just take stupid pills today? I'm surrounded by idiots. Not exactly quick and easy. No, 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 shut up, more settle, and let's wrap this puppy up. Luckily, Kion is there to roar the water away, proving that he's better than Moses, I guess, and the river flows once more with the animals safe. <sighs> I like this view. Me too. I'd say it's pretty clear that this day was not our best. The episode ends with Bunga jumping into some flowers against Rafiki's advice because once you've been a sage, you begin to think you know better than everyone else. I think Bennett can attest to that statement. Ah, uh, guess I'm not so wise after all. Oh well, I can live with that. And I can't deny that this episode wasn't horrible per se, but it's the weakest episode by far. The message in this episode is good in teaching how sometimes problems shouldn't be solved simply and life can get difficult, and I admire that. I also especially like the animation, particularly in the water chases, but the characters aside from Bestie and Kion were either played as idiotic or hyperactively big-headed, the song this time around was annoying as heck, and I'm sorry, how does Kion get blamed for Bunga's mischievery in this situation when he tried on countless occasions to keep him from this stupid sage nonsense? It's not a horrible episode by any stretch, but let's face it, the next episode would trump this one queen style. You'll figure that out in the next video. I'm Brandon the Baby Man saying take care of yourselves guys and I'll see you at the movies. It's a death row pardon, two minutes too late, and isn't it ironic, don't you think? Now I've seen everything. When I see an elephant fly. It's difficult being so gifted.